uh, first a discussion of the anatomy and the physiology of the heart. No? Okay, so sa heart muna tayo. This is cardiopulmonary uh, physical therapy. No? So unahin muna natin yung uh, cardiovascular system no? before we proceed to the pulmonary system. So basically, ang magiging uh, coverage ng ating uh, prelim will be cardiopulmonary anatomy cardiopulmonary physiology, then ECG, basic ECG interpretation, and then we will have uh, the cardiac conditions, the diseases no? affecting the cardiac uh, or the cardiovascular system. And finally, the fifth topic is about uh, a review of Ah, dapat pala ito ay cardiovascular pharmacology. Kaya lang, you have a separate topic or you have a separate course in pharmacology. Anyway, so, i-skip natin yung pharmacology kasi nga pala, no, the design of your curriculum is you have pharmacology as a separate course. So, therefore, we only have four. No? And uh, okay din naman yon because no, nabawasan na tayo ng isang meeting no, for cardiopulmonary physical therapy. So later, I will be giving you all of those references that we will be using because we will not be using just one reference. No? We will be using a separate book for the anatomy and physiology. Then we will be using a separate book for the cardiac conditions. Okay? And then the same with the pulmonary. Sa midterm kasi pulmonary naman. Then pagdating natin sa finals, it will be more on cardiopulmonary physical therapy na the interventions no, that are used for those cardiopulmonary conditions. Can you let me just uh, open my, uh, my slide? Okay. Can you see it? Yes, poster. Okay. So uh, for today, no, we will have yung munang first part, which is anatomy. No, I divided my uh, slides in cardiac anatomy and physiology into two parts. So basically, since this is part one, we will focus more first on the anatomy of the heart. It is very important that you have no, a sound understanding no, of the basic anatomy and physiology of the heart before no, you understand no, and know how to interpret okay, yung basics of ECG. And of course, no, to be able to understand the different conditions affecting the heart. No? Dapat no, alam na alam mo muna yung kanyang anatomy and physiology. So for today, our learning outcomes will be first to describe the external structure and location of the heart. Second is to discuss the blood flow within the chambers of the heart and related major blood vessels. Third is to enumerate the component of the heart's intrinsic conduction system and discuss the chronology of impulse flow to those components. And finally, describe the different stages involved in the action potential of nodal cells in the uh, of the nodal cells and the cardiac myocytes. So let us start 
our discussion. Okay? So, uh, first, yung uh, location, no? the heart. Okay? So, uh, you very well know, know that the heart no, is the central pump of the circulatory system. It is because of the constant pumping and beating of the heart why we have a continuous blood flow in the circulatory system. Because of the blood pressure generated by the heart, there is continuous blood flow. As a result, the different vital organs of the body receives oxygenation, no, oxygenated blood no, that it needs to sustain their function. Now, in an average uh, person, in an average 70 kilogram man, no, it is said that the size of the heart is about the size of a closed fist. No? Okay? About the size of the closed fist, just like what you see in the picture. And okay, it is said that the heart is conical in shape. It's shaped like a cone no? lying on its side. No? Ang itsura ng heart natin, ito yung cone, no? kanyari, ayan yung cone that is lying on its side. No? Ayan. So, nakapatong siyang gano'n. No? Kanyari, ayan yung pinagpapatungan niya. Ganun itsura ng heart natin. So, therefore, if it's a cone, it has a base and it has an apex. No? Just like here in our heart, no? it has a base and it has an apex. Okay? Now, we will go back to that uh, shape of the heart. Now, uh, the heart is situated no? in the middle of the thoracic cavity. It is included in a mass of tissue that we call the mediastinum. No? The mediastinum. Okay? So the mediastinum okay, serves as a median partition in our thoracic cavity. As a result, it divides the thoracic cavity into two sides and two independent cavities. Uh, therefore, the left thoracic cavity where the left lung no, is contained or situated is basically independent from the right thoracic cavity where the right lung is situated. Ibig sabihin, no, uh, for example, in stab wounds, no, pasyente, for example, nasaksak sa right side of the chest, no, nag-penetrate on the right chest, it penetrated on the right lung and the thoracic cavity. It may cause collapse no, of the right lung, no? And yung tinatawag nating pneumothorax. No? And when we say pneumothorax, no, that is when air enters the thoracic no, uh, cavity, specifically the pleural cavity. No? Napasok yung pleural cavity. Ay, wait lang. It's supposed to be T. Oh, T ito, ah. letter T. Pneumothorax. Okay. And it will result to collapse of the right lung. Okay? And even if that happens, no, pneumothorax no, on the right uh, pleural cavity. And even if that happens, even if the right lung no, collapses, okay, the left lung will not be affected. Because no, again, yung air pressure on the right side is independent from the air pressure on the left side. Why? Again, because of the presence of the mediastinum, no? which uh, the, the heart is included in the mediastinum. No? So kahit mag-collapse yung left lung, no? the right lung will not be affected and vice versa. So what else? No? What else are the structures included in the mediastinum aside from the heart? Okay, the, yung kanyang covering, no? which is the pericardium. Yan ang mga kasama. Ha? The heart, the pericardium, no? the... Ito yung pointer ko. The superior vena cava. No? Yung blood vessel na yan. Then you have your aorta also. And although it is not uh, in the drawing, kasama din sa mediastinum yung ating trachea and also our 
esophagus. So again, this mass of tissue forms as a, a median partition in the middle of the thoracic cavity, dividing the thoracic cavity into two independent cavities. Okay, and uh, that is the function of your mediastinum. Now, going back to on the uh, shape of the heart, as we have said earlier, it's like a cone lying on its side. With the apex, if you will look at the orientation of the apex, the apex of the heart is pointing somewhat downward. No? Kasi nga, the cone is lying on its side. No? So this part of the cone or this part of the heart is the base of the heart. So if you have an apex, you have a ah, base, sorry. Ah. If you have the apex, you have the base. Correction, correction. This is the base. This is the base. Ah, what do you call this part of the heart? It's not the base, but rather the diaphragmatic surface. The diaphragmatic surface because it is in contact with the diaphragm. Again, okay, that, that's the part of the heart that is attached to the diaphragm. Now, going back to the apex, no? okay, the apex of the heart no? is where the point of maximal impulse no? is located during each heartbeat. No? Kada tibok, nandyan yung pinakamalakas na impulse ng heart natin. Uh, that is the reason why during auscultation no? on the surface of the chest, you will also hear the loudest heartbeat no? over the apex of the heart in this location. No? So kung titignan nyo yan, using our surface anatomy, eh, ito siya. Oh, di ba? Oh, dyan, if you place the stethoscope in that area of the chest, no, that is where you will hear no, yung malakas na heartbeat. No? And there is a technique no, in order for you to easily locate no, the apex of the heart on the surface. Okay? Aside from it is oriented towards the left side of the chest, no, remember that it is located over the fifth intercostal space. No? It's a fifth intercostal space about nine centimeter from the midline. So if this is the midline, it's about nine centimeter from the midline. So that is how you locate the apex of the heart. Again, in, in that area is the point of maximal impulse. And in that area, no, the beat is also called the apex beat of the heart. So that, that is very important, especially kung walang pulse yung pasyente at walang available na ECG. For example, in cases of, of uh, ano, no? in cases of, of uh, emergency, no? okay? in order to detect if the heart is still beating, if you have a stethoscope, no, you may locate, again, the point of maximal impulse or the apex beat of the heart using those surface landmark. Again, it's on the left side of the chest over the fifth intercostal space, and it is about nine centimeters from the midline. Okay. So let us continue. In the mediastinum, no? The heart is enclosed within a sac that we call the pericardium. Again, no? the pericardium. Ito yung spelling niya. No? The pericardium actually is a triple layered sac. Ha? May tatlong layers yan. No? What are those layers of the pericardium? Okay? You have number one, the fibrous pericardium. And then you have no, a double layered serous membrane known as the serous pericardium. Ngayon itong serous pericardium may dalawang layers. The parietal layer and the visceral layer. And that is the reason why all in all 
the pericardium has three layers. Again, the fibrous pericardium and the two layers of the serous pericardium. Uh, what are the two layers of the serous pericardium? The outer parietal and the inner visceral pericardium. So this is the enlarged view no, of that small square in that drawing. So you will notice that the fibrous pericardium no, is the outermost layer and it is made up of connective tissues. No? Connective tissue, ang uh, composition yan. Uh, and uh, its main function is, number one, no? for protection of the heart. No? For protection, no? outer covering siya. And then second is that it anchors the heart to the surrounding structures in the mediastinum. Ah, yung fibrous pericardium. And since the fibrous pericardium okay, is not stretchable no, because it is made up of connective tissue, it protects the heart from being overstretched during its pumping action. No? Okay? So during its pumping action, the heart is not overstretched because it is enclosed within the fibrous pericardium. Now, next to that is your serous pericardium. And take a look, how is the serous pericardium arranged? No? Kung makikita nyo, ah, the two layers of the serous pericardium, no? yung parietal at saka yung visceral, are one and continuous to each other. No? Kasi it's like this. No? The way the serous pericardium surrounds the heart is that no, the heart no, is, for example, ito yung heart natin, is, it's as if the heart is pushed into a fluid containing balloon. Oh, let's say, for example, ito yung balloon. No? Oh, may laman yan na fluid sa loob. May laman na fluid. When the heart is pushed into that balloon, this is what will happen. Uh, for example, if this is the heart and this is that balloon, so what will happen? Diba? It will have two layers that will now completely surround the heart. And that is the, the actual situation of your parietal and visceral pericardium. That is why the parietal, the outer parietal layer no, is right next to the fibrous pericardium, while the inner visceral layer is right next to the heart wall already. Yan ay nakadikit sa heart wall natin. And syempre, since there is a fluid ano, inside that uh, balloon, no, na parang balloon na yun, yan, uh, that fluid also will now surround the heart. And that is your pericardial fluid. Okay? So what is the main purpose or what is the function of that pericardial fluid? So yung uh, yung uh, dark purple, no, yung matingkad na purple, that represents the pericardial cavity that contains the pericardial fluid. So what is the main purpose of the pericardial fluid? Oh, what is the function? Oh, the function of the pericardial fluid is to no, prevent the friction uh, between the parietal and visceral pericardia during the pumping action of the heart. Diba? No, Pinaprevent niya yung friction. It has a lubricating property. And aside from that, the pericardial fluid also somehow cushions the heart from trauma. Diba? It cushions the heart from external trauma. But you have to remember, no, I don't know if you have heard this condition. Ah, narinig niyo na ba yung uh, word na uh, peri carditis. Okay. Ah. Peri 
pericarditis. When you say pericarditis, that is the inflammation of the serous pericardium. Yung serous layer lang. Both the parietal and the visceral layers. Now, ngayon, when there is pericarditis, there is this tendency for an excessive production of pericardial fluid. Pagka sobra-sobra ng pericardial fluid, the resulting condition is called pericardial effusion. O, di ba? Pag sobra-sobra ng fluid, yun naman talagang tawag. Even in the joints, no? if there is excess production of synovial fluid, it's called synovial effusion. If in the heart, it's called pericardial effusion. Now, anong delikado sa pericardial effusion? If there is pericardial effusion and continuous accumulation of pericardial fluid, there will be an increase in the pressure inside the pericardial space. If there is increased pressure, the tendency now for that pressure is to compress onto the heart. No, makokompress yung heart natin. And that excessive compression of the heart can lead to a life-threatening condition because it compresses or it will limit the pumping action of the heart. It will not be able to pump properly. And that life-threatening condition is called cardiac tamponant. Ah, hindi ko na ilalagay yung cardiac. Ha? Alam niyo na naman spelling nun. Ito lang. No? Cardiac tamponad. It's pronounced as tamponad, but it is spelled as tamponade, as in lemonade. Ha? Ha? So, cardiac tamponade yun. Kapag ka, yung puso mo, hindi na makatibok ng maayos kasi naiipit na siya because of the increased pressure in the pericardial space or in the pericardial cavity. So, as a summary, Again, the pericardium is a triple-layered sac. No? The outermost layer is the fibrous pericardium, which is made up of connective tissue. The inner layer is the serous pericardium, which is divided into two layers. Pa rin. The outer parietal and the inner visceral pericardium. Inside no? the pericardial cavity is the pericardial fluid which is important for the lubrication of the two layers of the serous pericardium. Okay? Now, so next to the visceral, syempre, no, pinaka, uh, the deepest layer na is the visceral pericardium. Next to the visceral pericardium is already the heart wall. So, uh, the heart wall also has three layers. Ayan, ito. Ito na mismo yung heart wall natin. Ito has three layers also. Ah, you have the AP. Oh, ayan. Ah. AP. Mayo. Mayo. At saka endo. Oh, tuloy nyo lang. Epicardio. Mayocardio. At saka endo. Cardio. The epicardium is the outermost layer of the heart wall. And it is one and continuous with your visceral pericardium. No? In fact, in some textbooks, the visceral pericardium is also the epicardium. Yun na yun. No? Okay? Kaya, ano yan eh, Mag magkadugtong lang kasi sila. No? The epicardium and the visceral pericardium are one and continuous to each other. And next to the epicardium is the thickest of all the heart walls. Ito yun, yung pinakamakapal, which is made up of cardiac muscles or the myocytes. And that is called the myocardium. While the innermost layer is no, an epithelial tissue, which is called your endocardium. No? Endocardium. So, tuloy natin. Okay. So, uh, let's take a look at the anatomy no, of 
the chambers, no? Inside the heart. Ayan, tingnan muna natin. Oh, wait lang. Ayan. Okay? So, makikita nyo, there are major blood vessels, no? Attached, no? To the heart, no? Yung mga blood vessels na yan, no? You have your superior and inferior vena cava. Oh, this is the superior vena cava. At saka ito naman yung inferior vena cava. Oh, anong function ng superior at saka ng inferior vena cava? It is no, uh, the blood vessel no, that functions to return yung mga blood coming from the systemic circulation. Yung uh, superior vena cava, ah, it drains blood, it drains blood from our head, our neck, and from our upper extremities. While the inferior vena cava dra drains blood from our trunk and from our lower extremities. Yung katabi na to ng vena cava is your aorta. Kung itong vena cava, ang ginagawa niya, it drains blood from the systemic circulation. Itong aorta, it pumps blood going to the systemic circulation. No? Nagpa-pump siya ng blood papunta sa systemic circulation. Ha? So, uh, that is the reason why yung uh, vena cava, ha, ang kulay ng kanyang blood, Ang kulay niya mainly is blue because it contains unoxygenated blood. While itong uh, uh, ano tawag dito? While itong uh, uh, itong uh, aorta uh, itong aorta ay, it pumps oxygenated blood. Ano? Kaya nga kulay red yung kanyang kulay. Uh? Okay. So, uulitin ko, the vena cava ha, at yung aorta, oh, yung isa galing sa systemic circulation. Galing sa systemic circulation yung dugo niya. No? Papulik, pabalik sa heart. Oh, it's your vena cava. Yung isa naman, yung aorta, papunta sa systemic circulation. That's why yung blood na dala niya is oxygenated blood. Oh, what? What are the other arteries no? or blood vessels connected to the heart? You also have your no? left and right pulmonary artery or you have yung tinatawag natin kung saan sila galing is your pulmonary trunk. No? Pulmonary trunk. O ano naman ang ginagawa ng pulmonary trunk? O pagka tinanggal natin yung outer Layers of the heart. O, kita mo ngayon yung loob. O, ito, anong ginagawa ng pulmonary trunk? It divides into left and right pulmonary arteries. No? Ang function nila is to pump an oxygenated blood to the lungs. Diba? Iyan ang magdadala ng unoxygenated blood to the lungs no? for oxygenation. At pagkatapos nun, yung mga blood na nanggaling sa lungs, will return to the heart via the arteries that open here. Oh, oh, veins rather, that open here. Nakita nyo itong maliliit na butas na to. Ayan, dalawa yan. Pero actually, apat yan. Hindi lang kita yung dalawa pa dito na maliliit na butas. Meron pa dito. Apat yan because on the right, you have two right pulmonary veins. And then you have on the left, the two left pulmonary veins. So, tandaan nyo, ang pagkakaiba ng pulmonary arteries at saka ng pulmonary vein, pulmonary arteries brings an oxygenated blood to the lungs. While pulmonary veins, no, they bring oxygenated blood from the lungs back to the heart. Okay? So, yun yung uh, mga major blood vessels that are connected to the heart. You have the two blood vessels carrying 
uh, blood to and from the circulation. Again, it's your vena cava and your aorta. Yung vena cava, no? it carries blood from the systemic circulation. Yung aorta, it pumps blood towards the systemic circulation. While nasa pangalan na nila, ha? pulmonary arteries and pulmonary veins, yung pulmonary arteries pumps blood or carries blood to the lungs. While yung pulmonary veins carries blood from the lungs towards the heart. Okay? Okay. Sige. Let us continue. Kaya tatayo lang ako. Ah. Uh, Naaantok ako eh. Tatayo mo na pang. Tatayo ako habang nag-lecture. Okay. So moving on. If we remove no, the anterior part of the heart, you will be able to see its uh, cutaway view, meaning no, the chambers inside will be exposed. And you will also be able to see the specific chambers where those blood vessels no, that we mentioned earlier are connected. No, but before no, we do that, no, let us first identify those chambers of the heart. So you will notice no, that the heart all in all has four chambers inside. Diba? You have the two upper chambers and you have the two lower chambers. The two upper chambers are called the atria. Atria pag plural, no? atrium pag singular. So you have the right atrium and the left atrium. No? And the left and right atrium are separated from each other by a septum known as the interatrial septum. Ito po siya, yung katabi ng aorta. That's the interatrial septum. So therefore, the blood present in your left and right atria will not mix because of the interatrial septum. And then the two lower chambers, ito naman, no? the lower lower chambers, these are called the ventricles. So you have your left ventricle and your right ventricle. Huh? Okay, left and right ventricles. Okay, so, uh, so on each side, kung per side naman, ang titingnan mo, on the left side, so therefore you have the left atrium, then the left ventricle, while on the right side, you have the right atrium and the right ventricle. Now, the ventricles are also separated by a septum, huh? the interventricular septum. So therefore, no, there is no mixing of blood no, in on the left and between the left and right sides of the heart. Although, there are congenital heart conditions no, that uh, we will be discussing no, or that you will be, discuss, will be discussed to you by your teacher in pediatric physical therapy come second semester. There are congenital heart conditions wherein no, yung mga septa of the heart ay may butas, no, may congenital holes. Okay, siyempre. O, oh, yun yung sinasabi ng mga doctors na, o, oh, pinanganak yung baby, may butas sa puso. O, oh, kapag ka may butas sa puso, no, pwedeng dito yon sa interventricular septum, or pwede rin namang sa interatrial septum. And if that happens, there will be mixing of oxygenated and unoxygenated blood. So, instead of just oxygenated blood, no, that circulates majority in our systemic no, circulation, it will be mixed with unoxygenated. No? Kaya nagkakaroon, hindi lang basta-basta namumutla yung baby, no? pagkapanganak, hindi lang pale. There is bluish discoloration no, of the baby. And what is that medical term for bluish discoloration? Anong medical term for bluish discoloration? Alam nyo na? 
letter C. Are you there? Hello? Letter C? Letter Y? Cyanosis. No. Very good. Cyanosis. No, that is the primary manifestation of babies no, na merong congenital heart defect, na may mga butas sa puso. Kaya, if, if the baby becomes very, very cyanotic, di ba? The layman's term that the doctor usually used to describe it no, among the parents is a blue baby. No? Kaya kung tawagin nila, blue baby. And again, it happens because of the mixing of the oxygenated, uh, the mixing of uh, unoxygenated blood to the oxygenated blood. Eh, dapat eh, ang nagsisirculate lang dito, yung pinapasok sa aorta, eh, oxygenated blood lang eh. That is why it's supposed to be red. Oh, diba? eh, dahil nga may butas dun sa mga septum, o oh, naghalo ngayon, nagmixing ng blood, resulting to no, unoxygenated blood also circulating in the systemic circulation. No? Kaya nag nangingitim sa Tagalog, yung baby, nagkukulay blue. Okay? Uh, sige. Now, uh, sige, let us continue. Uh, we will now trace yung uh, blood flow no inside the heart no para mas madali niyo maintindihan i-try nating i-trace yung blood flow no doon sa puso natin so ay di ba sabi natin ayan na yung animation na yan sabi natin ha lahat ng used up oxygen of the body ha lahat ng used up unoxygenated blood rather of the body babalik din sa puso niya no? Kasi yung function ng heart natin, di ba, is to pump blood. No? Function yan, ipapump niya yung blood to the systemic circulation. No? So yung magdadala ng oxygen, yung blood natin. Now, the organs will take up that oxygen and then, syempre, the blood will become unoxygenated. And that unoxygenated blood needs to return back to the heart so that it can be pumped to the lungs naman for oxygenation. So, sundan natin no, yung ating blood. Okay, sundan natin. O, ano sabi natin kanina? No? Where will blood be drained as they return to the heart from the systemic circulation? Okay, it will be drained through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Okay? O. Ano yung mga bloods that are being drained by the superior vena cava? Oh. Earlier, we said that it is no, yung uh, uh, head and neck and the upper extremities. While the inferior vena cava is from the trunk and from the lower extremities. It all drains into the right atrium. Okay? Then from the right atrium, it will be pumped to the left atrium. Okay? No? And since this is a cutaway view, oh, hindi mo kita dito that actually uh, the left ven right ventricle, sorry, uh, from the right atrium to the right ventricle. Right ventricle, bababa na siya sa right ventricle. And since this is a cutaway view, it is not shown in the drawing, you know, how the pulmonary trunk is connected to the right ventricle. Pero actually, itong pulmonary trunk, ito, pulmonary trunk to, di ba? Gawin natin kulay blue muna. Yan, para mas madang. Upo na ulit ako. Yan. Uh, gawin natin kulay blue muna. Uh, yan. Uh, dito dapat galing yan, yung pulmonary trunk natin. Yan. Uh, uh, dyan yan connected. So, from the right ventricle, pump will go to your pulmonary trunk. No? The blood will go or will be pumped to your pulmonary trunk. And then from the pulmonary trunk, it will divide into le the left and right pulmonary arteries. So let's say, oh, dito natin lagay yung lungs. So kunyari, nandiyan yung lungs natin. 
Yan. Diyan yung lungs natin. O. Okay? No. Ngayon, o. Pagdating yan sa lungs, the blood will be oxygenated. And once it is oxygenated, o magiging red na ngayon, red natin. Once it is oxygenated, blood now returns to the heart via the four pulmonary veins. O, dalawang galing sa left at saka dalawang galing sa right. O, dadaan niya sa likod, tapos dito. O, ayan. O. Ako ka, no? So therefore, from the left and right lungs, blood returns to the heart. This time, sa ano siyang side? Sa left side na. Specifically, on the left atrium. And then from the left atrium, blood goes to the left ventricle before it is pumped to the aorta. Oh, sa arch of aorta. Oh, and the ano function ni aorta? The aorta will distribute the blood to the different parts of the body. To the systemic circulation. Huh? Okay. And then when blood is used up again. By those internal organs. Blood then returns to the heart. Via the. Again. The superior and inferior vena cava. And that is why it is called circulation. Because it just circulates. No? Pagpabalik-balik lang. No? Uh, this is a very good uh, uh, representation. Uh, this animation is a very good representation no, of what is happening in our circulation. No? If you will look at this animation, diba? if this is the systemic circulation, for example, diba? the blood is used up and becomes unoxygenated. And then after being unoxygenated, it goes back to the heart Okay, via the inferior and superior vena cava. Saan ang diretso nila? Sa right atrium. Then from the right atrium, punta sa right ventricle. From the right ventricle, you have your pulmonary trunk. No? And then you have your left and right pulmonary arteries. O, nandyan ngayon ang lungs mo. Ha? Makuha? Nandyan ngayon ang lungs mo. O, ano nangyayari sa lungs? The blue turns red, meaning the blood is again being oxygenated. The oxygenated blood will now return to the heart via the left and right pulmonary veins. From your pulmonary veins, it goes to your left atrium. From the left atrium, it goes to your left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, it goes to your aorta. And then finally to the systemic circulation again. Huh? Okay. Another representation is this one. No? Ito. Oh, yun din yun. No? Yun nga lang. Oh, tao na ngayon. Yung, uh, yung nakita mo dyan. The, the actual circulation. Huh? But it is just the same. So therefore, no, I need you to memorize no, yung tracing of blood flow within the chambers of the heart and the associated blood vessels. And it will be included in our quiz no, next Wednesday. Huh? Yung pagkakasunod-sunod. You must be able to memorize that wherever is your starting point. It's up to you if you will start no, in the pulmonary circuit or if you will start in the left ventricle. Oh, in our case, we started in the superior and inferior vena cava. Wherever you start no, the sequence, O, o kung saan man ang starting point mo dyan, ang mahalaga, alam mo yung pagkakasunod-sunod. Again, because importante yan. Kasi when we discuss about heart failure, yan, dun mo malalaman, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng edema sa lower extremities if there is heart failure? Bakit ba eventually nahihirapan na rin huminga yung pasyente kapag ka may heart failure? Bakit ba tinutubig ang baga pag ka mayroong heart failure? O, Okay? Eh, kailangan alam mo muna yung hemodynamics. And when we say hemodynamics, it is the dynamics of blood flow within the heart and in the 
circulatory system. Let us continue. Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, magnified view no, of our cardiac muscles. So ito ang itsura no, ng ating uh, cardiac muscles when you look at it under the microscope. And you will notice that no, each of the cardiac cells no, are interconnected by a special cell-to-cell -cell junctions no, that we call intercalated disc. Itong uh, partition na yan, uh, these are special cell-to-cell -cell junctions. Ito pa, meron din dito. Ayan, no. Okay? These are special cell-to-cell -cell junctions that we call intercalated disc. Okay. Now, intercalated disc is important. Number one, because it contains desmosomes. Desmosomes are uh, uh, like staple wires no, that binds the cells of the myocardium together so that during the pumping action of the heart, uh, the myocardium, the myocardial cells, does not pull apart. While yun namang ating uh, gap junction, yung ating gap junction, no? these are uh, electrical junctions no? that is very important for the rapid spread of action potentials no? in the myocardium. O, tapos kayo ng physiology. Kaya dapat alam nyo na may idea na kayo what is an action potential. Oh, yung gap junction, because of that, action potentials rapidly spread from one myocardial cell to another myocardial cell. So that no, when the heart contracts, no, all of the cells contract simultaneously as one. Hindi yung may nauuna, may nahuhuli. Ang resulta nun, magiging mahina yung contraction. And if that happens, the heart will not be effective as a pump. So, ganun ka vital, no? yung ating gap junctions. So, those are the two structures that are important, no? that are located inside the intercalated disc. Okay? So far, do you have questions? Clear naman ang ating discussion? Clear naman po. Okay. Yes po. Okay. Ano lang po. <laughs> Need lang ng onsen processing po sir. <laughs> oh, ganun talaga yan. No? Uh, so, uh, since this is a recorded, no, recorded naman itong ating uh, uh, meeting, yan, you can go back to that. no, Or, Mas maganda, bago nyo balikan yung recording, you know, bibigay ko yung reference ko mamaya. You, you read the reference, tapos yan, para mas maintindihan nyo siya. No? Meron na, ano yan, it's actually an anatomy and physiology book. No? Magbasa, tapos kabalikan nyo yung recording. Yan, so let us continue. Yan. So the next part no, of our discussion is the intrinsic Conduction system. O, ano ba itong intrinsic conduction system na to? Ha? O, that the heart has its own conduction system. That's why it's called intrinsic. No? Because the heart has its own... Hindi pa. Hindi pa. So, kaklasi pa ako. Amaya pa. Amaya pa. Amaya pa. Amaya pa. 11.30. Oh. Okay. Okay. Gawin mo na ngayon. Gawin mo na ngayon. Sige na. Gawin mo na. Okay. So when we say Intrinsic conduction system, no? Ibig sabihin, the heart has its own conduction system of the impulses. 
meaning no, those electrical impulses, those action potentials that makes the heart beat is generated on its own conduction system. Kaya tinawag siyang intrinsic. No? Unlike our skeletal muscles, wherein uh, when the nerve supply is cut, so diba, mga skeletal muscles natin, no? o katulad ng uh, biceps brachii, o pag pinutol mo ang, ang uh, ano nga nerve supply ng biceps brachii, pag pinutol mo ang musculocutaneous nerve, o biceps brachii, will be paralyzed, no? will, be, will lose its tone because action potentials that makes the biceps brachii contract, no? eh dumadaan sa musculocutaneous nerve. For example, o eh, kung sa lower X naman, it's your, uh, for example, your quadriceps. It's through the femoral nerve. So therefore, when you cut the femoral nerve, the quadriceps femoris will be paralyzed. In our heart, no? it has its own conduction system. No? So even if the heart is disconnected from the nervous system, huh? okay, from the nervous system. Even if, iba sabi natin, no, dun sa discussion natin ng pharmacology, what innervates the internal organs or what innervates the heart? The autonomic nervous system. Oh, merong sympathetic fibers no, that innervates the heart and also parasympathetic fibers that innervates the heart. Even if you cut those innervations of the heart, the heart will still beat on its own because those sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations are just there to modify no, the intrinsic conduction system. But the rhythm no, of the beating heart is set in the intrinsic conduction system. Okay? Kaya nga, I don't know if you if in your biology class, no, in your high school, you were able to dissect a frog. No? Kapag ka magda-dissect ka ng frog, hindi pwedeng patayin eh, no? Pinaparalyze lang yung frog, tinutusok ng probe dito sa batok para ma-paralyze. No? Tapos buhay siya. And then during the dissection, when you remove the the, the heart's uh, the frog's heart from its body, no? and you put it in a pan, it will still continue to beat for a few minutes as long as no? uh, may natitira pang oxygen no? and blood. No? Pero titibok pa rin mag-isa because, again, it has its own conduction system. Oh, okay. Bakit ganun, ka, ganun kagaling yung conduction system? No? Why does it generate its own action potential? Because it consists of autorhythmic cells. And those autorhythmic cells can initiate no, and distribute their own impulses or action potentials all throughout the heart. Okay? Hmm. Nasaan yun? No? Nasaan yung mga autorhythmic cells na yun? Ha? Or automatic cells na yun? Lahat ng yellow in this drawing. No? Oh. Lahat ng yellow dyan is part of the conduction system. All of that are autorhythmic cells. By the way, other name for autorhythmic or automatic cells, they are also pacemaker cells. Uh, in some books, it's called pacemakers. Pacemaker cells. Huh? And, um, okay, so lahat ng yellow na nandyan. No? So ano-ano yun? So starting from the right atrium, uh, dito tayo magsisimula sa right atrium, mula sa taas. No? You have the SA node, also known as this. Actually, SA stands for sino. Sino, as in sino. Huh? Sinoatrial node. No? Sinoatrial node. Then you have your internodal pathway. Then you have your AV node, which stands for atrio 
ventricular node. Then you have your AV bundle. This is also known as the bundle of his. I think this is a name. Okay, bundle of his. And then you have your left and right bundle branches. Uh, and the last part of the conduction system are your Purkinje fibers. Okay, so as a node, internodal pathway, AV node, AV bundle, bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. Uh, okay, so the Ah, uh, paano yung pagtulay ng conduction system diyan? No? Paano ba kumakalat yung uh, action potential all throughout the conduction system, no? Which makes the heart, no? Contract rhythmically, di ba? Oh. Kala, yun. Yun siya, no? Okay? So, as you can see, action potential begins in the SA node. And those action potential Generated by the SA node, ah, spread, no, okay, all throughout those autorhythmic cells, and then from the autorhythmic cells, oh, kakalat din yung action potential dun sa mga adjacent myocardial cells or myocardium, resulting to the contraction of the heart, no, producing the pumping action. Ha? Okay? So, tingnan nyo, no? yung pathway of depolarization, again, it begins in the SA node. And then it spreads through the AV node all throughout the, the atria, both atria, the left and right atrium, via the internodal pathway. Then from the AV node, it goes down to the ventricles via the AV bundle, the left and right bundle branches, and your Purkinje fibers. Okay? So that's the pathway no? of depolarization no? sa heart natin. Okay. Remember that, no? Y yung sequence, no? Okay. Now, although all of those cells no? Oh, lahat ng kulay yellow dyan are uh, automatic cells, autorhythmic cells, or pacemaker cells. There is only one considered as the primary pacemaker of the heart. And which do you think, no? based on what you are observing right now, which of do you think uh, of all of those autorhythmic cells, all of those yellow uh, cells, which do you think is considered as the primary pacemaker of the heart? Alin dyan ang primary pacemaker? Sa tingin nyo? Hello? Yung AV ba ba? Yung? SA node? Or... SA node. Because, no, aside from the fact that it is where, no, it is the origin of all of those impulses, di ba? Pansin nyo naman, eh, doon sa animation, doon ang gagaling sa SA node, yung impulse. No? Aside from that, the SA node has the highest rate of rhythmicity. O, siya yung pinakamabilis ang rhythm ng paglabas pag, uh, ng uh, impulse. It generates impulses at a rate of 60 to 100 impulses per minute. Oh, yung iba, yung ibang mga parts na yan, mas mabagal kaysa kay SA node. Like for example, si AV node, oh, ang rate niyan, oh, 40 to 100 lang impulses per minute. Ay, 40 to 100, sorry. 40 to 60 lang. No? Tapos si Perkin G, ano lang yan? 20 to 40. Oh. At dahil mabagal nga sila, o oh, ba? before they can generate their own action potential, the impulse or action potential that is traveling coming from the SA node has already 
arrived. O, oh, diba? Kasi mas mabilis si CSA node, 62,100. So, therefore, they are not given a chance, kumbaga, to generate their own action potential because they are much slower than the SA node. No? And that is also the reason why the normal heart rate no, also ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. It's because it is set by the SA node. No? O, eh, galing kasi sa SA node yung rhythm na yun eh. Ha? Galing sa SA node yung rhythm. No? 60 to 100 beats per minute. That is why uh, sa ECG kapag ka normal, as in walang kahit anong abnormality yung ECG, no? Ang nilalagay na interpretation ng ng mga cardiologist NSR. NSR stands for normal then sinus rhythm. Normal na siya, sinus rhythm pa. Ibig sabihin ng sinus rhythm, the rhythm oh, originates saan lahat? doon sa sinoatrial node. No? Okay? Kaya sa tinawag na normal sinus rhythm. When you say sinus rhythm, again, the impulses huh? that makes the heart beat no? na kumakalat doon sa buong puso natin is coming from the SA node. The reason why it's called sinus rhythm. Okay? Do you have questions? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Okay, I'm fine. Inumlaw ko ng tubig ah. Wait lang. Give me two minutes. Okay, you then. Kung gusto niyo mag CR, uminom mo ng tubig. Go ahead. Wait lang.
Okay. Do na ba kayo? Ito pa sa. Okay. How about si Sheila? Sheila? Hi, sir. <laughs> okay. Sige. So, uh, we're down to the next topic, which is the cardiac action potential. Oh, you, 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 are, you are already familiar now with uh, how no, the action potential spread across the intrinsic conduction system, no, the sequence no, of those cells no, through which the action potential pass through, and the, the rhythmicity rate no, of the selected uh, uh, components. No? Okay, so yeah. So let us now go to the cardiac action potential. No? The details of that, no? the details of what we have just discussed. Okay, the coordinated contractions of the heart resulting from the electrical changes that take place in the cardiac cells is called cardiac action potential. Okay, again, it is the coordinated contractions of the heart resulting from the electrical changes that take place in the cardiac cells. Okay, so. Uh, Action potentials no? uh, generated by autorhythmic cells. Okay, let's say, for example, no? oh, kumuha in, the, in this drawing, no? kumuha ng small part, no? for example, of the SA node. Oh, the in enlarge dito para makita yung arrangement ng mga cells. Oh, by the way, this one, no? uh, this, uh, this intercellular junction that you're seeing, that's your intercalated disc. Oh, that's why in, in the intercalated disc, what you will find, diba? you have your desmosome, ayun siya, and then you have your gap junction. Oh, okay, so from an autorhythmic cell to a myocardial cell no, or a contractile cell, oh, you have uh, intercalated disc. From one contractile cell to another, you have another intercalated disc and so on and so forth. Okay? So, ganun ang itsura. So, when an action potential is generated by the intercalated, uh, intercalated, this tuloy, when an action potential is generated by the autorhythmic cell, no? okay, that action potential spreads through the adjacent contractile cells via no? the gap junctions in your intercalated Discs. See what will happen in this animation. You. Mm. Okay. So as you can see, no. Oh. Okay. The action potential spreads no from the direction of no an autorhythmic cell, papunta doon sa mga adjacent contractile cells. No. And see that no changing. Uh, uh, charge from the inside and the outside no, of the cell. So the initially, kita nyo, the charge inside the cell is negative, while the charge outside the cell is positive. But once no, it is no, uh, stimulated, no, once nag-undergo siya ng action potential, mm, okay, oh, nagkakaroon ng oh, yeah, Depolarization, depolarized, then repolarization, no? repolarized. Okay, I hope no, you're already familiar with that uh, process because you're already finished with basic physiology, cellular physio. That's part of cellular physiology, right? Are you already familiar with resting membrane potential? Naalala pa ba ang resting membrane potential? May nabanggit. <laughs> <laughs> May nabanggit. <laughs> so cellular physiology. When you say resting membrane potential, na, it is the difference na, of charge across the cell membrane. Okay? Oh, yun ang ibig sabihin ng resting membrane potential. 
the difference of charge across the cell membrane. Kasi nga, uh, since the cell membrane is selectively permeable, di ba? it allows only substances, selected substances to pass through. Okay? There is this tendency for some charged particles to accumulate outside the cell and also some charged particles to accumulate inside the cell. And uh, most of the time, yung sodium, di ba? Most of the time, itong sodium accumulates outside the cell. Eh, di ba positive ang uh, charge ng sodium? No? Naiipon siya sa labas. No? And most of the negative electrolytes or ions accumulates inside the cell. And it results now to the difference, no? of the charge outside and inside, making the inside more negative. No? And that is the resting state of the cell, meaning when the cell is not yet stimulated, uh, the inside is more negative than the outside. And in the case of the... In the case of uh, the... Nodal cells, no? o, SA node, AV node, no? basta lahat ng kulay yellow dyan, the resting membrane potential is negative 60 millivolts. Negative 60 millivolts. So therefore, eh, kung, kung, ito yung, kung ito yung graph, no? kung igagraph natin yan, oh. okay, kunyari ito yung Ito yung graph ng positive 10 millivolts. So, kunyari, 10, 20, ha? 20. Ay, magsulat na maliit, ha? 30, yan. No? O, di ba? Ayan. O, eh, nasaan yung negative? Siyempre, yung negative na sa baba. O, kung ito yung zero, o, yung negative na sa baba. Di ba? O, negative 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. O, kunyari, dito yung negative... 60 millivolts. So, ayan. Ganun ka-negative yung charge inside. No? Oh, andito siya. Sa baba, negative 60 millivolts. Did you get the point? No? Ganun, ang, ano, ganun yung uh, ibig sabihin ng uh, resting membrane potential. Ngayon, when an action potential takes place, kita nyo naman kung ano nangyari. No? Nung nagkaroon ng action potential o oh, Ano nangyari? From being negative inside, o oh, ano nangyari? Di ba? O, oh, kaya nyo. Oh, ayun, o, oh, naging positive na siya. No? Ibig sabihin nun, no? during action potential, nagkakaroon ng rapid exchange of ions no? across the cell membrane, resulting to the change also in the potential. O, oh, posibleng may mga nakapasok na positive ions. Kaya naging positive sa loob. Ha? So, nabago ngayon yung potential ng membrane. Di ba? So, uh, pag nagkakaroon ng action potential, yung negative 60 na yun, mababago din. Malamang positive na yun. Kaya nga, ang tawag doon sa state, o, oh, pansinin nyo yung naging tawag doon sa state. Ang naging tawag doon sa state, oh, ngayon, naka, ayan, depolarized. Oh, because it is a result of depolarization. Di ba? Depolarization. Di ba? Oh, naalala niyo pa ba ang phases ng action potential? Oh, di ba dalawa lang yan? Depolarization at saka repolarization. Diba? Diba? Depolarization at saka repolarization. When you say depolarization, it is the reversal of the resting membrane potential. Ay, wag yan na po. Doon, doon saan madami nasa floor. That is the reversal of the resting membrane potential. Wherein... Uh, when the cell is at rest, the inside is negative and the outside is positive. When there is reversal, ano nangyari? The inside becomes more positive while the inside becomes more negative. At babalik din yun. Oh, 
Pagkatapos ng depolarization, babalik sa dati. Oh, what's the next? Repolarization. Repolarization is when, kaya nga re, meaning return. No? When the inside becomes negative again and the outside becomes positive again. Meaning returning back or going back to the resting membrane potential. Pakisara yung pinto. Okay? Okay, so uh, uh, we'll, let's discuss the details no, of the action potential no, that is taking place in the, uh, in the, uh, wait lang, nodal cell muna, no, in the autorhythmic cell. No, if, if it is uh, kung sa ano man yan, kung sa SA node man yan, or kung sa AV node, no, pare, paraho lang naman na ganyan ang nangyayari doon, SA node, AV node, no? sa Purkinje fibers. Yan. So, in the action potential taking place in any autorhythmic cell, sa baba nga kayo. In the autorhythmic cell, na, it involves three ion channels. Ano yung tatlong ion channels na yun? You have your sodium channel, your potassium channel, and your fast calcium channel. If you will go back to that action potential that was discussed to you by uh, Ma'am Steph, no? sa inyong physiology, simple lang yung action potential na na, na discuss sa inyo. Eh, no? Yung action potential na na discuss sa inyo involves only two phases. Uh, and that is, no? kung galing dito sa negative, that is depolarization, uh, meaning from negative, umakyat siya sa positive and then followed by repolarization. Oh, kung natatandaan niyo pa yan eh yung depolarization it's brought about by sodium influx. Oh, pumasok yung mga sodium kasi bumukas ang sodium channel. Na? While repolarization is brought about by potassium efflux. Ibig sabihin lumabas ang mga Potassium kasi nabuksan yung potassium channel. And in that basic cell physiology, no, walang involvement ng calcium channel. Walang nabanggit na calcium channel. Because what you discussed in, uh, uh, in that physiology is only muscle and nerve physiology. In muscle and nerve physiology in muscle cells and nerve cells, there is no calcium channel present in their cell membrane. Oh, walang calcium channel na present sa cell membrane nila eh. Oh, yun ang pagkakaiba ng sa heart action potential. In our heart, you only you have a third uh, channel involved and that is your fast calcium channel. And since you have an additional channel involved, the phases of action potential is also Three, tatlo din yan. Ha? Aside from depolarization and repolarization, mayroon madadagdag na isa. Kasi tatlo yung channel. So, discuss natin in detail. What are those? So, ano yung tatlong yun? Oh, ayan na, naka-enumerate na. You have number one, pacemaker potential. Number two, depolarization. And number three, repolarization. Oh, ito ibig sabihin, may sumingit lang pala na isa. No? Instead na depolarization and repolarization lang, first you have your pacemaker potential. Hey, let's take a look at that. Okay, so as we have said earlier, what is the resting membrane potential of most nodal cells or automatic cells? It is negative 60 millivolts. But that negative 60 millivolts no, is not constantly maintained no, okay, because no, of the influx, no, slow, continuous influx of sodium. No? Okay? No. Uh, itong uh, sodium na yan, uh, itong sodium channel na yan, no, okay, uh, nakabukas talaga yan continuously. 
Nakabukas talaga yan continuously for purposes of discussion so that you will appreciate the effect of its opening. Oh, isasara muna natin siya para makita nyo na oh, nandito muna siya sa negative 60 millivolts. Pero pag iyan ay naka-open, ganito nangyayari dyan. Mm. Ganito nangyayari dyan pag iyan ay naka-open. Yun. Kita nyo? So, ang resulta, no? Okay? Because the sodium channel is open, okay? And sodium, positive sodium ions entered the cell, di ba? It created a change in the membrane potential. If initially, the membrane potential was negative 60 millivolts, no? Right after a few sodium ions entered the cell, no? the negative 60 millivolts changed into, o oh, umakit ng konti, di ba? No? Lumapit ng konti doon sa positive because all the positive ions enter the cell. But still, it is negative. O, oh, negative pa rin sa loob. O, oh, negative pa rin sa loob. No? Because only a few positive ions entered. But from being negative 60, it became just negative 40. It became less negative. And that disturbance in the membrane potential, not that change in the membrane potential, okay, is already enough no, in order to open the next ion channel, no, which is yung calcium channel. No, kumbaga, hinihintay lang naman talaga ni calcium no, that the uh, sodium channel opens and the membrane potential reaches the negative 40 millivolts. Kumbaga, the negative 40 millivolts is a threshold, a voltage threshold for the calcium channel to open. And once it is reached, already therefore, the calcium channel will already open. Kaya threshold yung negative 40 millivolts. And once the calcium channel opens, take a look at what will happen. Okay, more positive ions enter the cell, no? Okay, coming from the calcium ions. Oh, take a look at what happened. From negative 40, since more calcium ions entered the cell, oh, the inside no, suddenly changed from negatively charged to positively charged. Hence, our graph no, already no, overshoot. No? Nag-overshoot na siya doon sa zero. Meaning, oh, anong tawag doon? There is already rever reversal of the resting membrane potential that is now called depolarization. And that is the second phase of the action potential. Okay? Now, the third, pay, third phase is repolarization. No? Third phase is repolarization. And uh, during uh, repolarization, no? uh, yung sodium no? and uh, calcium no? is already closed. Okay? And there is only one remaining ion channel to open, and that is your potassium channel. When your potassium channel opens, no, kapag ka bumukas, ang potassium channel mo, ayun, ang mangyayari. Oh, what is the direction of potassium? Oh, efflux, potassium efflux, meaning from inside to outside. And since potassium is a positive ions, and when positive ions go out of the cell, oh, it will now result to oh, re, uh, the return to a negative state again uh, no, on the inside, meaning you go back to the original resting membrane potential. Hence, the term used here is Repolarization, meaning you go back to the resting membrane potential. So from being a positive, 
Oh, you go back again to negative 60 millivolts. Oh, di ba? From negative 60 millivolts, oh, maghihintay ka ulit that a few sodium channel opens, di ba? A few sodium channel opens, and then slowly sodium will again enter the cell until you reach the threshold. Eh, what is the threshold again? Negative 40 millivolts. O ano ulit mangyayari? Kapag ka naabot ang negative 40 millivolts? Hmm. Yan. Ah. Sino gusto sumagot sa inyong dalawa? Hmm. Once negative 40 millivolts is reached, which ion channel will open? Calcium. Calcium. Very good. Calcium. Pagka nagbukas ang calcium, depolarization ulit yan. O, di ba? Tapos asara yung calcium, maiiwan na kabukas naman ay potassium. E di repolarization ulit. Ganun lang yun. No? Hanggang paulit-ulit na nangyayari yan. No? Ilang ulit mangyayari yan? Depende sa rate. Di ba? Ah, sabi natin, o, what is the rate of rhythmicity of the SA node? What's the usual rhythmicity rate of the SA node? 60 to 100. 60 to 100 impulses per minute. Okay? Ah, ah, sige. As a summary, ah, which ion channel or which ions ah, enter the cell during this stage of the action potential? Ah, ito, phase one, pacemaker potential. Anong ions to? Sodium. Sodium. Influx or efflux? Influx. Pumasa. Influx. Influx. Good. Very good. How about this one? Phase 2. Depolarization. Anong ions yan? Calcium. Calcium. Huh? Specifically fast calcium channel. Oh. Influx or efflux? Influx. Influx pa rin. Very good. Ito. And then, ito, ano ito? O, anong ion channel to? Potassium. Potassium. Influx or efflux? Efflux. Efflux naman. Ako ha? So, the, ano pa lang ba? We are just on the first part of the action potential. Because we had, we, we just finished yung part of the automatic cell or autorhythmic cell no on the part of the SA node the AV node no basta lahat ng nasa conduction system but what about the action potential taking place on the contractile cell how is that action potential initiated and what are the ion channels involved oh ito ngayon fast sodium channel oh iba yung pangalan ano Oh, actually, yun din yung mga ion channels pero merong fast, merong slow. This time, this is a fast sodium channel. You have the same potassium channel and you have the same, ah, you have a slower calcium channel here. And let's take a look at how action potential will take place here and how it will be initiated. And as you can see, the resting membrane potential of a contractile cell is much negative, much more negative as compared to uh, arresting uh, uh, nodal cell. O, sabi natin kanina, di ba? Si SA node and any nodal cell has a resting membrane potential of negative 60 millivolts. Ay, ito palang mga contractile cell is much more negative. No? O, it's negative 90 millivolts. Negative 90 millivolts. It's more negative. Okay? No? Uh, let's take a look at how action potential takes place here. Ayan. Ayan natin. Ayun. Oh, may role pala yung gap junctions. No? There is this role, no? important role of the gap junctions. Uh, if you will look at the gap junction, uh, it serves as the passageway for positive ions from the nodal cells transferring to the resting uh, contractile cells. And the entry of these positive ions creates 
a small voltage change. And that small voltage change itself is already enough to open your fast sodium channel. And the opening of your fast sodium channel will result to, tingnan nyo, i-compare nyo kung gano'ng kabilis yung pagpasok ng sodium dito. Mas mabilis yung naging pagpasok ng sodium. That is why here, no, sodium entry pa lang or sodium influx pa lang what happened already. Sodium influx pa lang, there was already reversal of the membrane potential. So therefore, that is already depolarization. No? Na reverse agad eh. Depolarize agad. No? It's because of the rapid entry of sodium. And that is phase one. Okay? Now, what is phase two? Oh, no? oh kung, kung ang ine-expect natin, repolarization agad ay hindi pa. Oh, ganyan. No? So dito, depolarization is followed by plateau. Because here, depolarization will trigger the opening of slow calcium channels this time. Okay? Actually, bago magbukas yung slow calcium channel, no? magbubukas muna itong uh, potassium. Laging ang magkasunod kasi dapat is after ng sodium, ang kasunod, potassium. Oh, e kaso, oh, tingnan nyo mangyayari pag bukas ng potassium. Yan ha? Hmm. Okay. O, dalawa yung nangyari. Saba yan. No? No. Ulitin natin. Yung napansin niya. Hmm. Di ba? Lumabas ang potassium. Nung lumabas ang potassium, eh dapat sana pababa na eh. Kita niyo? O, oh, pababa na nga sana eh. Parepolarize na eh. Nung lumalabas yung potassium. Kaya lang, no? Sumabay, biglang sumabay yung pagbukas ng calcium. Eh tingnan niyo yung direksyon nilang dalawa. Magkasalungat. Hmm. Di ba? Bumababa na sana, lumalabas kasi si potassium, pero biglang bumukas yung calcium. Nagkaroon ng mabagal na pagpasok ng calcium. Ang resulta, instead of this rapid repolarization na tuloy-tuloy na pagbaba sana, ganito mangyayari sana eh, kung ang potassium lang ang bukas. Kaya lang nakisabay yung Calcium. So, there is slow influx of calcium. So, nagkaroon ngayon nito. Ano ngayon to? Ito ngayon yung tinatawag nating plateau. And it is due to the opening of calcium channel. Ha? Pero, temporary lang yan. No? The calcium channel is just temporarily open. Because once it closes, okay, potassium channel will be left open. And since only potassium channel is left open, oh, ang makikita nyo, Saki, Saki, ang makikita, Saki! Ang makikita nyo, oh, bumalik na siya sa dati, nagrepolarize na. Nakukuha? Okay, so therefore, the third phase is repolarization. No. Oh, sige. Tanong ko ulit. Sinong responsible dito? Anong ion channel ang responsible for depolarization? Dito, anong ion 'yan? Hello? Sodium, fast sodium. Very good. Very good. Fast sodium 'yan. No? Fast sodium influx. Eh itong maiksing maiksing repolarization na 'to. Itong maiksi lang, itong part lang na 'to. Ano 'yan? yung uh, potassium na efflux. Yes. Potassium efflux. Ma, eh itong tumagal na to. Slow calcium ions. Okay. 
slow calcium yan. Nakuha, slow calcium influx. Yan yung plateau. At yung tumuloy na ulit na pababa, o oh, anong naiwan na nakabukas dyan? Yung potassium. No? Potassium ulit. Maliwanag ba? So, para mas malinaw, kasi sa ibang libro, especially in most cardiology books, and also in our book in, in, uh, in uh, pharmacology, oh, hindi lang tatlong phases yan. In most cardiology books, it's labeled as saki. Zero, phase zero, phase one. Yung napakaliit na yun, may, may count yun. Phase one, phase two, phase three, and this is phase four. Pati yung fl flat line sa baba, phase four. Uh, phase zero is depolarization. Phase one is early repolarization. Phase 2 is plateau and phase 3 is late repolarization and phase 4 is latent phase. Ulitin ko, phase 0 is early, uh, phase 0 is uh, uh, depolarization. Phase 1 is early repolarization. Phase 2 is plateau. Phase 3 is late repolarization. And phase 4 is latent phase. Okay, kaya, ay, wala na. Oh, okay, kaya yan, dalawang yan. Oh, mangyayari lang to, magkasunod dapat yan. Mangyayari lang itong uh, action potential in contractile cells if oh, tapos na yung sa autorhythmic cells. Diba? Ayan, ito. Ito muna. And then, tsaka mangyayari. Ito. Maliwanan. So, you have to remember no? the cells, no? or rather the, the, the ion channels no? involved. No? Okay, in the uh in the uh occurrence no of those action potentials and it will be included in our quiz next meeting. So questions so far. Sir, parang gusto ko na lang pong tumuloy. <laughs> Ano? Para parang, gusto mong ano? Ano, sir? <laughs> parang gusto ko lang titigan. <laughs> <laughs> Hindi, ma. Maano mo yan? Makukuha niyo yan kapag ka nagbasa na kayo ng, ng book. Tapos, uh, tapos inanon nyo rin siya. I-re-replay nyo siya mamaya doon sa recording. Tapos mamaya, mamayang hapon, no, so, mag-start tayo ng uh, 1 o'clock. Uh, uh, parang make-up class natin yun. Uh, gagawin ko, itutuloy ko sa, ng discussion sa part 2. No? Kasi nawalan tayo ng klase last time. Tutuloy ko sa part 2 para matapos na natin lahat ng uh, uh, anatomy and physiology of the heart. So that next week, we can start na uh, basic ECG interpretation already. Okay, so I'll see you later at 1 o'clock. Okay, thank you for listening and bye-bye. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor.